Oh yeah, babe. Oh my god. Hi. <laughs> I'm back. It's been almost two months. I'm not gonna apologize for that. The only thing I'll apologize for is saying that I was gonna upload twice a month, but I am actually getting ready to film. I have like three videos I need to edit. But that's okay because I don't like any of them, so I'm not gonna edit them. I just wanna do a little chit chat get ready with me. I wanted to make these when I was younger and I never did, so I'm gonna do that now. But we're gonna be trying this bad boy today, the skin milk from CoverGirl. Do I? I've never tried this stuff. Everything else I'm gonna use is all makeup that I know works for me. I'm gonna be looking down because my mirror's right here and that's my mic. Okay, no mind. These are the nails. Ooh, they actually kind of match. So this is gonna be a first impression. I've already swatched it, so I know it's the right shade for me. Wow, that's very, yep, okay. I'm gonna, I think I'm just gonna use my camera as my, <laughs> as my mirror. I'm also just gonna spread this out with my fingers and then if there's extra, I'll just pick it up with my beauty blender. So how are you guys doing? I'm actually really liking how this feels. It's pretty much, it doesn't look like it right now because I just rubbed my skin a whole bunch, but it's pretty much evening out my skin tone really nicely and it's not sticking to any dry patches. That's a lie, it's sticking to one dry patch that I have, but that is on me because I didn't do a whole lot of skin prep. Okay, I'm actually pretty impressed with this. It has a little bit of glow. I wish my camera could show you what my skin actually looks like because I definitely do not have flawless skin. This is just my camera because I film on my phone, but for my mirror, it looks quite nice. I actually really like this stuff and it's like the perfect shade match have a zit right there but it's pretty much just evened out most of the redness in my face which is just what I want to do because it's hot like I don't know about y'all but it's hot to me um when I'm done filming I will give you guys an update as to how this wears it is 6 45 p.m right now as I'm filming this so we'll see what happens so how are y'all doing like I asked earlier I finished my psychology class. I was in a class called Abnormal Psychology, which was really cool. It was really interesting. I really enjoyed it, but I like studying a lot of different things. I like studying anatomy, physiology, the brain, not neuroscience. I'm not very good at neuroscience. I'm interested in CTE though and like how to diagnose that while someone's still alive. I know it's not good to put makeup on your pimples. I just want a little bit of that redness to go down, just a little bit. I'm not, I don't want a crazy amount, but yeah, it was really interesting. Um, I did get an A in the class because I do in fact have the world's biggest, juiciest brain ever. And I did it all in Four days started. I did like one assignment when I was supposed to, and then one extra at the beginning of my class, and then I did nothing the whole time. Came out on top. Don't do that. Seriously, don't do that. That's really stupid. Okay, this actually looks super nice with my concealer. I just used the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer, shade one in Cool Ivory. I used to use Fit Me when I was younger, and uh, I always really liked it. Um, thought it was pretty nice. Yeah, that's good enough. The camera's not gonna pick it that much up. I honestly don't have like a whole lot. I have things going on that I'm not gonna share because I like having my privacy. But there were some things- oh, oh my god, I hope I didn't get too much. This is the e.l.f. Halo Glow Beauty Wand contour. It's in Bare. It's the lightest shade. There were some things I did want to talk about though that have been sort of on my mind lately. This is just like my opinion. You don't have to take it. It's not that deep. It's just an opinion. What what in the hell is up with situationships? What what the fuck are we doing here? What I'm I'm saying this on the heels of me thinking about a post that my friend sent me about someone that was in a 17 month 17 months almost a year and a half situationship that's a relationship just without the title and he's like my 17th month situationship asked me to be his girlfriend why at what point do you just need to have self-respect y'all get so mad at these guys when they say that they don't like when they don't make a move but they're still gonna talk to you and they're still gonna treat you like that like they're gonna be all sweet to you but then not actually ask you to be their girlfriend 
stand up. Stand up and have some fucking self-respect. Please. My God, you're gonna let a man play you like a fiddle for that? Let's fucking go, baby. Let's go. For that long too? Oh baby, no. And that's the thing, like they, the men know that you like them and they know that you care. Uh, that was a little too much. Oh, I'm fucking it up. It can be blended. Y'all are letting these men fuck you guys up. And for what? Temporary satisfaction? Like he's not worth it. And it sucks to hear that, but like if a man does not ask you to be his girlfriend after a couple months, leave. Please do everyone a favor and fucking leave because all you're gonna be is miserable. You're not gonna have fun. You're not gonna have a good time. Like, situationships put me in awe. <laughs> I don't know how y'all can do that. Could never be me. I once cut a man off because he said he didn't want a relationship and I did and then he got so mad he started shit talking me to everyone saying I was just crazy because I have bipolar disorder. I have type two, so. Oh, got a little personal again. Oh well, I don't really care about that stuff. It's just like my health <laughs> and like my relationships I like to keep private, but I just, and that was after we had been friends for like six months because we met at my old job and then he started shit talking every, like started shit talking me saying I'm crazy or whatever. Like he didn't just throw a whole temper tantrum because I said, sorry, I, you were not on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> My head fucking hurts! I can't do it! I'm just contouring. It's just this eyeshadow palette because nothing I have. I don't have any actual contour powder. So I just have to use a little bit of cool toned eyeshadow, which is kind of the only eyeshadow I use these days. And that's it. Now I take this brush. That's gonna be a lot. I just want to talk about situationships. I also wanted to talk about a TikTok that I made. I believe it was last month. Fairly sure it was last month. It got 2 million views, which I've had TikToks do really well before. My highest one has 3 point something million views and it was uh, what you wanted to be versus what you became, that one. Anyways, and a lot of people got really upset because we all saw what happened. It was, you know, this grown woman making fun of someone else for how they chose to decorate a shelf. And my, my problem was not with the fact that the original poster was trying to talk about overconsumption. I want to put that out there right, right now, right then, very quickly. That's not what my problem with that video was. Because a lot of people seem to think that was what my issue was. Astounds me. I specifically stitched or screen recorded part of it to show what I was actually upset about. I always end up putting too much blush on because I am simply a blush girly, even though I complain so much about the redness of my skin. And here I am putting more redness back on top. A little bit of a tangent really fast. I'm actually really liking how this looks on my skin. My camera just blurs everything out, but I swear it looks really nice. Even with the, the powder that I put on, it's like a matte powder because even though I'm dry, I get really oily because it's so hot here. It really, it sets really nicely on my skin. I didn't use any primer either because the primer that I have is silicone based and the CoverGirl stuff is water based. And you don't want to be mixing water and silicone because it will pill, not peel, it will pill and then it just looks terrible. But I digress. Um, a lot of people seem to think I was getting upset over the overconsumption part, even though the part that I screen recorded was about the snobbery and the pick meism towards rich people. That's what I was upset about, and I cannot believe that some people didn't catch that. <laughs> Pretty obvious, in my opinion, that that was what I was talking about. And it really, I went a little hard, I admit, but I also felt like some people don't, they don't learn their lesson unless their consequences are severe. I don't want to say their punishment for it either, but the way that they learn from their mistakes needs to be harsh sometimes because they just won't get it otherwise. And it really kind of, kind of sucks what I actually really wanted to talk about were some of the comments that I got about who I looked like, what I spoke like. I'm just gonna use this rose water spray. It takes away all the cakiness of the powder, but I still have enough powder to where nothing's gonna move. Uno momento, por favor. Plus it smells so nice. I've been using this stuff for 
probably 10 years at this point and it's so nice it feels so nice and then i just take my sponge and i just lightly tap it all over my face melts everything together i kind of hope you can hear this i'm not a super big asmr person anyways the biggest thing out of that was that people were telling me i looked like young drew barrymore I looked like Leighton Meester, I think is how you say her last name. I sounded like uh, Cher from Clueless or Alicia Silverstone. Or that my ugh, like my uhs that I put in there sounded like they should be voice acted. Which is very flattering, thank you. I would love to voice act someday. I think that would be so much fun to voice act. I don't know if I would do dubs. Probably not because I don't like the way dubs sound. They don't sound natural, they sound so forced. It actually really pisses me off. Which is why I can't really watch a whole lot of things in dub because I hate the little noises that they make, the uh, uh, that sort of thing. I don't like that. I think it's stupid and it just ruins the atmosphere. <laughs> I, I sound- I think I sound a little bit negative right now, but I don't really care. Sometimes a bitch needs to complain. It's me, I'm bitches. Otherwise, I like don't have a whole lot going on. I started watching horror movies more because horror is one of my favorite genres. And I wanted to talk about a couple that I have watched recently. Um, right now I'm watching Malignant from 2021 because it was supposed to be really good. I'm not super far into it because I had stuff I needed to get done. And I was just watching a little bit of it while I was eating my lunch. And I have to say, so far, I'm a little confused so far. And I know more will be revealed the more I get into it, so. But I watched Pet Cemetery from 1989. I have not watched the new one. I have no plans on watching the remake because I just don't want to. I often don't like them. And I have to say, I read Pet Cemetery in one day. I think it took me about 10 hours to read it because I was a student as well in high school or I was a freshman in college, one of the two. And I hated the ending so much. There's going to be spoilers right now. So if you don't want any spoilers for Pet Cemetery, if you haven't read it, haven't watched it, but you want to skip, I might put the timestamp as to when I'm done. I might not. Editing me will take care of that. I hated the ending of the book so badly. I thought when Lewis brings back Gage after he gets hit and then Rachel and Ellie go back to Chicago and then, you know, Gage goes absolutely batshit, kills Judd and then eventually kills Rachel. I just... I put the book down and I said, what in the Chucky shit is going on? Because that's what it felt like. It felt like Chucky. And I've seen clips of Chucky. I've read part of the plot on Wikipedia. And I have to say, I was like, yep, this is, this is Chucky for sure. I don't know why this looks so patchy right here, but it doesn't look that way on this eye. I'm not really sure what's going on right here. To be fair, I am using the same brush for everything. Yeah, like look at that not blending out in the slightest and i really don't know why that is really weird i don't know what was going on with that so when lewis buries gage in the micmac burial ground he comes back with the freaking scalpel he starts killing everyone and he he ha ha and my thought is as i'm watching this is and as i'm reading this honestly i had the same reaction both times i went how are you going to let a two-year-old do that how are you going to let a two-year-old get away with killing your elderly neighbor and killing your wife. I've had just about enough of it, but I was almost done with the movie. And then when I was reading the book, I was like, I'm almost done with the book. It's fine. I'll just suck it up, I guess. And I did, and I have not picked it up since to reread it. And it really sucked because the build up to it, the, oh my God, it was so good. The writing, the atmosphere was fantastic. Had me on the edge of my seat the whole time. I just could not put my book down. And then the fucking ending come on man it was so disappointing i'm still disappointed by it even now and i just watched the movie i'm in a tight line but if you don't like eye pulling look away is what i suggest so anyways i watched that i watched like the first half by myself and then my parents came home from i don't know doing something my mom watched the rest of it with me and that leads me to the next movie that i watched i watched the amityville horror from 1979 good grief why is my eye so sensitive that just made me laugh old horror movies genuinely make me giggle they make me laugh i don't find them to be very scary i truly don't sorry that i just don't find them to be scary like at all i find them sometimes to be really well done in terms of atmosphere and just like sort of preying on silence and such but i can't get over the 
the close-up shots and then they scream that's what gets me the most i also wanted to know i don't remember i just remember george's name that's kind of all i remember i think i remember harry <laughs> carolyn that's the wife's name carolyn and then matt and greg and i think their her daughter's name is anne Anyways, my I did like that in the Amityville, in that version in the Amityville horror, you don't see what's haunting the house really until probably like an hour into the movie. I will complain that the pacing of it is really slow. I did not like the pacing. The pacing was so bad. I was like I'm sitting there with my mom. We're both on the couch watching. We're like, when is this gonna be? Like, when is this gonna pick up? You know? And truly, I did. Again, I like the fact that we don't see the antagonist. We only see the eyes first, which was really good. I like that. I like when we can't really see what's tormenting us because it feels more realistic to me. And I like the, uh, I guess, spoilers if you haven't seen that version of the movie as well. Um, I like the scene with Father Delaney and Father Boland in the church where um, Father Delaney's looking up at one of the angels in the church as he's calling out to God and then he goes blind afterwards. I thought that was a really well done scene and the back and forth shots didn't feel super cheesy this time, which I really appreciated. His rings are honestly iconic. I've never liked a man's rings before other than Father Delaney. <laughs> His rings are elite. They're so pretty, especially the gold one with, I believe it's a sapphire in the middle of it. That was that one. I have another one. I watched The Witch. Okay, I'm back. Issue has been hopefully resolved. I don't remember what I was saying. The camera is slightly different. I can't do anything about that. I watched The Witch recently since my class has been over and I gotta say I actually really liked The Witch in terms of just how realistic it felt. I did a little bit of digging on the actual movie and it was, there was a lot done behind the scenes. There was a lot of research done behind the scenes to look at making it as accurate to the 1700s as possible. Um, with the pilgrims coming to Plymouth and I really appreciated that because you can actually tell that they put effort into it and they put research into it and I found that to be quite nice. I thought that the concept of it was really interesting. I just really hate that random little incest thrown in there. Uh, if you haven't seen the movie you have no idea what I'm talking about and that's totally fine. If you have seen the movie you know what I'm talking about. I really really hated the dad. I'm not even gonna lie. Mom pissed me off too. She really, really irritated me the whole time. I get that she was upset about it and everything, but don't go blaming your kid for your problems, you know? I know it's a different time, but sometimes I judge with my modern brain first before I judge with my historical brain. I did really, really like the setup and everything. I thought it was really well done. Black Phillip's voice is fantastic. Shout out to Daniel Malik. Great. Love that. I also recently tried the NYX fat oil. This is in the shade Newsfeed. Feed. I really like it, especially paired with like a cranberry colored lip liner. It's really pretty. Anyways, I thought that just like the atmosphere of it was done really, really well. I felt a little unnerved like looking at those woods because I've been to places like that and it's genuinely kind of unnerving, especially when you look at it at night. Like my god. In nomine patris et filiae. Absolutely insane. It's it's truly and I have an appreciation for old English when I hear it spoken how it's meant to be spoken. I kind of feel like Shakespeare is the same. When you hear it in a play, even though you might not know what every single word means, you'll hear the intonation, the inflection, you'll see the context of the scene, and then you'll get what they're saying without actually maybe knowing what some of the words mean. It's quite fantastic, really. And I really just praise the acting of the cast. It's just so well done. I think I have a little bit of a soft spot for religious horror. I think that's a personal thing. I love this lip color so so much and then pair the top of this with just a little bit of this so good yeah i guess i really just wanted to talk about horror movies <laughs> uh my plan is to get through a couple more i want to watch the classics i've never seen the classic horror movies um i'm much more of a horror reader than i am a watcher i prefer to watch like analog horror and such because i find it to be a lot scarier than most of the 
Hollywood horror that's put out. Um, I recently watched Angel Hair. I'm about to start watching Greylock. I want to watch the Mandela catalog. I'm just not sure where to start with it. I, there's a lot going on with the Mandela catalog. This seems really good. I've seen Vita Carnes. I've seen The Oldest View and The Back Rooms. I can't even count how much analog horror I've watched. I watched uh, White Stag Education as well. That was really good. I watched a little bit of uh, Monument Mythos. I also watched Wendigoon's recap of it. Just the first season of it to help me kind of understand what was going on and it's really helpful. I'm about to start watching the theories part of it because I'm interested in that. I guess I just really wanted to talk about horror because I really enjoy it. I listen to a lot of Dr. No Sleep as well and I've been reading a lot on Reddit because No Sleep was one of the first Reddit communities I ever joined as a kid and by a kid I mean I think I was 12 when I made my first Reddit account. Ow. <laughs> I was on iFunny, man. I survived the trenches. I never touched 4chan because 4chan scared me as a kid. It still does as an adult because that's where I find that the truly degenerate people are is on 4chan and that scares me. All right, clips out. Okay, this is the look. This is what I have been wearing anytime that I'm either going out or I'm filming. It's super easy, super simple. It looks really pretty and depending on what time of the year it is, I can switch it up with the base layer, like foundation or the skin tint. After putting everything else on, this stuff looks super nice. I'm gonna hold my mirror up like this. It sits so well on my skin. It doesn't seem like it's settling into my fine lines or anything, and I really appreciate that. So I think I'm gonna keep using this because I really, really like this, and I, I mean, it feels like I have nothing on, which is so nice because normally I feel like I have a lot of makeup on, even though it might not look like it. I very much much enjoy that. I was going to talk about several things and then I ended up just talking about horror which feels like that's always where I come back to so I know I was gone for a while but I would just like to say thank you all so much for your patience. I will be back soon. I'm going to be filming another video tonight and I'm really excited so again thank you so much. I'll list the products in the description. Most of my makeup is drugstore anyways. I don't use super expensive stuff because I can't afford it. Don't look back there. New setup. You'll see it in in a different video, I promise. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching, and remember, get off your phone, get some water, or read a book, eat some vegetables, because it's Mother's Day tomorrow, I guess, and I know your mom would want you to eat your vegetables. <laughs> Go to sleep, get some real food, not just snacks, okay? I hit my mic every time. And have a great day, night, spring, summer, fall, winter, wherever you are, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!